Good day everyone, this is Professor Friday coming at you one more time. Today we're going to have a little lecture on solving triangles. So, this is a lecture intended for the end of a trigonometry course. What we have seen so far with triangles has been mostly right triangles, so today we're going to talk about any other generic triangle that looks like this. So, when solving a triangle, to solve a triangle, solve a triangle is to determine values of all three sides and all three angles for a given triangle. One of the really important aspects of triangles is that they do have three sides and that they do have three angles. Now also important to this process is going to be the procedure of labeling and these things get labeled in terms of their corresponding pairs. Corresponding pairs. These are also referred to as uh, side angle corresponding pairs or angle side corresponding pairs. They are alpha and A, beta and B, and gamma and C. Now, what corresponding pairs are? In your triangle, we have three sides and we have three angles. For every angle, it's comprised of two sides. A corresponding angle side pair will be an angle. Oh, come on, red pen. Work for me. There you go. An angle and the side across from it. So when labeling, if I'm going to label this angle as alpha, then the side across from it would be A. If I'm going to label an angle as beta, then the side across from it would be B. And if I'm going to label an angle gamma, gamma is comprised of the sides A and B, so C is going to be across from it. So in corresponding pairs, the angle side pair, those are across from each other. And that label is going to be really important. Quick note here, some books like to use uh, capital A and capital B and capital C for their three angles. I don't like that, and there's two reasons. One, when I write a side C and an angle C, they look really similar to each other. How are you to distinguish between the lowercase and the capital? Second off, all that we've been doing with angles so far in trigonometry, we've called them Greek letters. Let's just stick with that. It makes the most sense to me. So, for your corresponding angle side pairs and your angles and your sides of a triangle, there are some important relationships. So these important relationships are as follows. First one is that the sum of the measures of the angles of any triangle, well, any planar triangle, of any triangle that we're going to be talking about in the scope of this course, is going to be 180 degrees. So that's some good news. So we're back in degrees instead of working with radians now. So, 180 degrees. Next really important relationship is referred to as the law of sines. The law of sines is going to be used when we start solving these triangles. So the law of sines states that the sine of alpha over A is equal to the sine of beta over B but that's also equal to the sine of gamma over C. If you're interested in seeing the proof of the law of sines, please feel free to get in to contact me uh, via the comments section of this video. So the law of sines is going to be a really important uh, identity to have as long as we have a corresponding angle side pair. You'll notice that alpha goes with A, beta goes with B, and gamma goes with C. Really important relationship. So the last of our three relationships, let's get on over to the next page. The last of our important relationships is referred to as the law of cosines. Now the law of cosines, just like the law of sines had three different statements in it, the law of cosines has three different statements as well. This one is a little more complicated to show. It's based on the distance formula. First statement of the law of cosines is that a squared is equal to b squared plus c squared minus 2 times b times c times the cosine of alpha. We can actually rearrange that 
in terms of any of our sides. The statement of the law of cosines should not depend on what your labeling scheme is. Now for those of you who think that this might actually look a little bit familiar, you are absolutely right. When we have right triangles, one of our sides is equal to, or uh, excuse me, one of our angles is equal to 90 degrees, and the one that's equal to 90 degrees usually gets labeled as gamma. If we're dealing with 90 degrees though, that means that the cosine is equal to zero. So if I were to cover that bad boy up right here, and have just this guy right here, Hopefully that looks pretty familiar to you. That's our old Pythagorean theorem. C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared. So the Pythagorean theorem is actually a special case of the law of cosines for when you're dealing with a right triangle. This is the more general rule. So that's going to be an important thing to have. Now, when we're talking about applying any of these identities, we need to talk about the different cases for right triangles. Or excuse me, cases for triangles. So there are a total of five different cases, and it's going to be what information is given to you about the triangle. What information is given to you in the triangle? So there are a couple of different possibilities. One possibility is we could have two angles on one side. Another possibility is that I could give you two sides, one angle. And the third possibility is I could give you three sides. Now even those get uh, cut down into subcategories though, depending on the order of the information that I give you. If I give you two angles, and one side, we can break these down into two categories, referred to as angle, angle, side, and angle, side, angle. If I give you two sides and one angle, you could have side, angle, side, or you could have side, side, angle. If we are talking about three sides, then there's only one case there, and that's referred to as side, side, side. In my next video, I'm going to give you a more, uh, well, a more detailed breakdown of what exactly each of these is talking about.